Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, September 8th, and it's time to go on the record. Shannon Liz Reardon, an attorney who's taken on corporate titans, leaps into a race with political giants. Can she spring a Senate upset here in Massachusetts? You know, I even had math teachers who said, show your work. That's what we did online. She has crunched all the numbers, and now Elizabeth Warren gets her first shot at Joe Biden. Could this week's Democratic debate be a turning point? And is Beacon Hill looking to pump up the gas tax? Why legislators could be willing to go there. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to OTR. I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center 5's political reporter, Janet Wu. Thank you for joining us. Our guest this morning is Shannon Liss Reardon, who is a candidate for U.S. Senate here in Massachusetts. She is a Democrat. She's a Brookline resident, an attorney. As an attorney, she has filed a number of lawsuits against companies like FedEx, Uber, Lyft, Amazon for their treatment of gig economy workers. She is a graduate of Harvard University and of Harvard Law School. And, and for the treatment of gig, what, what is that? For the treatment of gig economy yeah, workers? Yeah, what yes. is that? So that's been a, a major focus of mine in the last few years is that there are all of these companies that are trying to pretend that we don't need employment protections. What is a gig economy? Uh, so these are Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Amazon drivers, Got Got DoorDash, GrabHub. Got it. Got it. Independent contractors independent that are not full time, right? Good. They're, cla they're classified as independent contractors so that these companies can avoid all their obligations as employers mm -hmm. and, and deprive these workers of the right to minimum wage. Mm -hmm. unemployment, mm -hmm. workers' comp, the Got ability it. to form a union, and, and that's what I've been fighting for Well, a we're going to talk about that at length a little bit, but first let's start off with the campaign. As you know, you're not the only person um, Ed Markey is worried about these days. Um, Congressman Joe Kennedy has made a strong move towards joining your race. Do you welcome him? I, I welcome anyone to compare my record to that of anyone who may join this race. I have spent my career fighting for working people, fighting for women. I'm not a Washington insider. I'm bringing a new perspective to this race, and I think that I have the, the experience, the record, and the skill set that Massachusetts needs in the Senate now. But would you rather he didn't get into the race because a three-way, four-way race makes it a little bit more complicated at the least, especially if you've got a star name like Joe Kennedy. Well, well, listen, I know Joe Kennedy, he's a very nice guy. I, I know Senator Markey, who is a good man. I'm bringing a different perspective. I, I, I'm bringing a different energy and, and passion as a political outsider, um, as, a, as a fighter for women's rights. Uh, going back to my college days, I, I marched for women's rights. My first job out of college was working with the feminist legend, Bella Abzug. Mm -hmm. that, that's where I got my start. Uh, I think we need more women in politics. We need more women elected office. I think that I am the candidate that we need now. So there is no chance that you would drop out of this race if Joe Kennedy drops in and run perhaps for his congressional seat? Is there no chance that would happen? I, I, I'm focused on the Senate race. This is what I got into. I've taken on big, unwinnable battles that people have said that everyone told me I couldn't win, and I've won them. That's what I've done through my career, and that's what I'm planning but to do But you're not now. ruling out the possibility of switching later. Uh, I'm focused on the Senate race. This is okay. this is what I, where I put my energies this summer. I've, I've spent the summer traveling around Massachusetts. I've been talking with voters all around the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. and I, I'm very excited about the reaction I've gotten. When I've gotten to talk with them, they've heard what I stand for, why I'm doing this, what I've done. They're excited, they're supportive, and I, I can't wait to get out there and so, meet more voters across Massachusetts. So, so many candidates, for example, have been have been inspired by folks like Ayanna Presley. Obviously, that, that's the local example here, but she was a Boston City Council for years. She worked for John Kerry. She worked for Joe Kennedy II. You're a complete political novice. Yes. What, so why do you <laughs> yes, think you I can am. jump into the U.S. Senate with no proven political skills? Yeah, well, I, I think the work that I've done as a lawyer, as a labor lawyer, as a fighter for workers' rights, I think that has built the skill set uh, that is what we need in Washington today. Uh, we need someone who has the guts to take on corporate America, and that is what I've spent 20 years doing. I fought, I fought for Starbucks baristas, American Airlines skycaps, FedEx drivers, gig economy workers, firefighters, strippers. I have taken on major industries, and I have brought the groundbreaking cases that have moved industries. I've moved the hospitality industry, the janitorial industry, the adult entertainment industry, and now I've started a national discussion about the gig economy mm -hmm. and, and whether these workers for these mammoth corporations like Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Grubhub, Amazon, whether they deserve the 
the dignity, the respect, and the rights of employees, or, or whether, as these companies would have, try to have us believe, those uh, those protections are, are just too old-fashioned. They're too 20th century, and I, I passionately believe that they're not, and that we need to change direction soon, or else we're not going to have employment in this country as we know it in the coming decades. I know that um, you... Um have been talking also a great deal about gun control out yes. in the campaign trail. And with the increasing number of mass shootings, you're calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. Given the realities of Washington politics, some would argue this is nothing more than a headline grabber. Are they wrong? No. no. So let me explain to you why, why I've done that, why I feel so strongly and passionately that we need to get guns out of our schools, out of our communities where they don't belong. Because it, time after time, we keep watching these, these mass shootings, these horrible tragedies. We need to pass federal legislation to strengthen our gun laws. We need to do it now. We need to ban assault weapons. We need universal background checks. We need red flag laws. We need that on a federal level. And once we do that, we need to make sure that these laws are going to be upheld in the courts. We, we've heard this. <coughs> we've heard this rhetoric for, you know, Sandy Hook didn't move the needle. What's going to move the needle? I think it's, I, I think people are outrage and I think it's it's across the board that people are outraged at seeing what these weapons are doing in our communities and and I think that, that the time is now that we can't wait any longer on this and I'm worried that we pass this legislation and it's going to get held up in the courts and that's why I've called for a discussion about repealing the Second Amendment, which is what Justice Stevens said last year just before he passed away, that, that we need to rethink the Second Do Amendment. Do you really think it really could be eliminated, that it could be taken out? I think it's a discussion we need to have. And, and remember that repealing the, the Second Amendment doesn't mean that there will be no guns in our society. It means that common sense legislation to restrict guns and make our community safer will be upheld in the courts. And I think it, we need to have that conversation it, begun. But, but, but doing that, is, isn't that the, the, the touching the third rail politically? Repealing the Second Amendment? No, I no, I don't think so. Because again, it, it means that it will allow us as a nation to pass sensible, common sense restrictions on guns. We don't we don't need weapons of war on our streets. That's not what was intended when the Second Amendment was passed in the 18th century. It, it was it was to have a militia that would protect the nation. It's it's turned into something completely different today. So so with that as the backdrop, let, let's let's continue to go back to what your strength is. Your professional reputation has been highlighted by successfully suing companies like Amazon, Uber, FedEx for treatment of their workers. So if you are elected, what's the first bill you put on the floor? Well, I. Uh, I am particularly concerned about how so many employers today are trying to avoid all workplace protections by misclassifying their workers as independent contractors. We need to tighten up and strengthen our rules to protect employment status. Um, so we have a particularly strong law here in Massachusetts uh, uh, that distinguishes between who's an employee and who's an independent contractor. California has actually now adopted the Massachusetts standard, which I have spent the last 15 years developing. Um, and I think we need to have this on a federal level. I think, I think nationally, workers need the protections that we've fought for for decades, that unions have fought for, and those rights are being eroded. And I think that's a national crisis. And, and I've spent my career fighting for workers, and that's what I the So the legislation would Washington. say what? The legislation would say specifically what? Um, so it would make it more difficult for employers to, class, to misclassify workers as independent contractors. Mm -hmm. It would put the burden on the companies to prove that the work is not being performed in their usual course of business. So in other words, these companies Companies that are that are built on the labor of workers, for instance, the labor of drivers and the rideshare company. Um, those those workers would be employees, and they would have rights to organize. They would have rights that they don't have now to minimum wage, to unemployment, to workers' comp. I have clients who are sleeping in their cars. Uh, you know, while these companies are, are funding these multi-billion-dollar IPOs, the the workers who I represent don't have enough money to buy three meals a day uh, and to have a place to live. And that's just not fair. That is not what our society is about, and we need to change that. So, In one word, 
What would be harder, taking on the NRA or Amazon and Uber, do you think? <laughs> I've, taken on, I've taken on Amazon and Uber, and I will stand up to the NRA. I, that's, that's what I've done through my careers. I've stood up to, I've stood up to um, entrenched interests, major powerful institutions. I haven't backed down. I've, I, I, I've, I've sued my alma mater, Harvard University, four times. I've, I've taken them on. We all need to be held accountable. So if you've taken on Harvard and Amazon and Uber, you haven't taken on the OTR <laughs> Pop quiz. So. Okay, I'm, re I'm ready. I'm ready. So let's start with TV lawyers. Okay, okay. I'm okay. not not a big TV watcher, okay. but well, I'll, I'll do Al, my best. Did you watch Ally McBeal? I uh, I remember Ally McBeal. It was a legal comedy drama series that was based in Boston. Calista Flockhart, an Emmy winner for the title role. Here's the question: What was the name of the Boston law firm that she worked for? Was it Crane Pool and Schmidt? Was it Cajun Fish? Was it Robert Donald and Associates? I have no idea. I'll go with A. It's B, Cajun oh. Fish. Crane Pool and Schmidt, by the way, was from Boston Legal. A was from Boston Legal, which was which was a funny show in and of itself. Okay. You once organized a legal auction that included a copy of the Constitution signed by Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So we have an RBG question for you this morning. All right. She was nominated to the high court by President Clinton. Who did she replace? Was it Warren Burger? Was it Harry Blackman? Was it Byron White? The, the options are on the screen. Who did Ruth Bader Ginsburg replace? Um, I believe it was Byron White. It was. And for extra credit, what was his nickname? Uh, I'm not going to get the extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> Byron Wizard White, who was, a, who was an all-American halfback at Colorado. <laughs> That's right. We continue on the record with Shannon Liz Reardon. Stay with us.